Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on our Tuesday webinar series. Today, we are blessed to be joined by Lynn Saint-Germain of CREA. She is the technology trainer manager, um, and she is here today to teach us about DDF, Data Distribution Facility. So, Lynn, I'm going to pass the floor off to you, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Let me just do a switch here. I'm going to share. Whoops. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not in the right, not at the beginning here. That's not going to help you. There we go. All right. Okay. Everything, everybody can see that? You can see my screen? Thumbs yes. up? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what, uh, of course, we're going to talk about today is DDF. Uh, as uh, Alex was telling me, apparently your brokerage is opted in. So uh, we're going to give you a lot of information about uh, what exactly does it do, what it is, where it's coming from. And uh, so part of our agenda today is just uh, very quickly, I'm going to, again, go into what exactly is Realtor.cDDF or Data Distribution Facility. It has five distribution channels, so we're going to go um, and talk about them individually. And some of the rules of DDF, I'm not going to talk about a lot of the legal stuff, but just to um, give you a little bit of a, an overview so that you understand how we protect the data that's actually going through uh, all the uh, companies that are involved in DDF. All right, so what is DDF exactly? Well, it's a really, uh, it's a, an integral part of Realtor.c because it's the vehicle that connects Realtor.c with all its advertising partners. So whether you're looking to expand the reach of your listing or save time building your brand, uh, the DDF network makes it easy for you to choose where your listings um, are going to be shared on multiple third-party websites while also providing more access to listings for your own website. So there is no additional cost to, for members or brokers. It is part of uh, your CREA membership. So listings don't get added uh, until the broker decides to opt in. So we will take a look at uh, how those permissions are set in the dashboard section. And if you have any questions as I am talking, please uh, just Throw them in the chat and uh, we'll do a pause uh, in order to hopefully answer all your questions today. So, so as I said earlier, the uh, DDF network has five different distribution channels. So let's take a look at them individually. So the first one here we're going to talk about is the real estate advertising website and partner site. So it allows you to share your listings uh, across a growing network of partners, uh, most of them national brands, such as TD, Canada Trust, Scotiabank, and The Globe and Mail. And just to explain a bit further, uh, just the way how our partnership, TD was our first national uh, partner. So for example, if a consumer goes on their website to do an affordability search, they would receive uh, in their search results listings that, of course, they, that fit the, what they can afford. So because uh, of all our partners receive only one picture and the basic information on the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, for example, the full, for the full description uh, and the listing agent contact information, the consumer has to link back to realtor.ca. So if you look at uh, my example here of the TD uh, screen there, so wherever I would click on here, if I, there's really nothing more that I'm offering through any of these partners. So they have to link back to uh, the realtor.ca uh, site. And one of our latest partnership was with Microsoft Bing. So Microsoft selected uh, DDF to be the sole source of Canadian real estate listing data for their launch of a new search experience. And that was a first for Canada. So let's take a look at the reasons why Bing is such a great partner for our industry. They have on average about 1 billion searches that start um, uh, that are being done on Bing every month. They are the top search engine next to Google. They are available in 105 languages and obviously uh, pretty much around the world. And it just ensures that the realtor 
and Realtor.c are central to any search for real estate online. So if we're looking at an example here uh, of a search that was done uh, through a, the Bing browser. So as with all our partners, once a listen has been selected, any request for more information sends the consumer back to Realtor.ca for the full listing and the listing agent information. So anywhere I would click on this uh, search result here uh, would take me back to Realtor.ca. So those images that you see, the content, these are provided by the Realtor, the listing agent. So um, there's no more or less information that would be provided on Realtor.ca. And our research shows that, that, that consumers visit at least 10 different websites when starting their real estate journey. So our goal is to capture their attention, even if they don't start with Realtor.ca, but we will bring them there eventually and so they can continue their search and hopefully will convert into a lead. And also as part of our advertising network, uh, we also have created agreements with uh, a number of uh, real estate advertising websites. You may rec uh, recognize some of them here that are probably the most popular here, KGG, Point Two Homes. And some of the rules that are in place for all of these vendors is first of all, is they can't distribute the data to other websites or modify the content of the listings. They are required to display brokerage information and also create trademarks. They cannot create a database of historical information. They must also present the realtor logo as the source of the data. And all of those websites that are part of the DDF network are required to be refreshed every 24 hours so that uh, all the listing content that is no longer current uh, is removed. And this helps ensure, of course, that our members' listings are always advertised correctly, no matter where they are uh, found on the, on the internet. And let's take a look at an example here of um, uh, a Kijiji, which is one of our advertising website. Uh, so if you see at the top left here, the image that's on my screen here, you can see the Realtor logo. So this logo is added by Korea when we process the data that is sent to us um, by the boards. So displaying the logo is an option. However, we uh, of course recommend to the boards that they activate it because uh, the consumers have a very high level of recognition of the Realtor logo. So especially if it's on another website, then they're ensured that uh, it is a viable uh, listing. The second link uh, to the right side of my screen the second link is uh, a link to directly to the Realtor.ca website. It's also below in that box, there's a direct email to the listing agent. And these leads always go through the Realtor.ca system as we do not provide emails to any of our partners. And again, of course, uh, at the bottom uh, of each listings, they must add our legal disclaimer and be powered by Realtor.ca logo. Then we have the national shared pool, which increases your access to listings that you can advertise on your own website. It also lets you distribute your own listings to other member websites, giving you, of course, more exposure. So the way that it works, of course, is participants must contribute their listing content to the pool to gain access to another participant's listing. So it's essentially an IDX. A lot of uh, local boards have uh, IDX, uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but it would be, of course, a local um, listing information. Ours is of a national, national nature. Uh, it is fully customizable, so you can choose to filter by property pages, area, or price to present listings that match uh, your own uh, specialization, and we're going to get a bit more into details later on. It also gives you the flexibility to choose where to send your listings while ensuring that your listing content is correct and of course up to date, no matter where it is viewed online. So that's uh, the second one of our feed. And there's an example here. Uh, so this realtor is promoting a listing. She's uh, obviously from Remax, but she's promoting a listing from Royal Lepage. Uh, so at the very minimum at the 
bottom here, you can see they must display the brokerage name and of course all of the Korea trademarks and also logos from uh, the listed brokerage. We also have the national franchiser pool, which allows participating brokerages to share listing content with multiple franchisers. So you can distribute listings to a number of franchisers. Uh, it's always, of course, about giving more exposure. There are currently nine franchises that, are, uh, that do have access to the national franchiser pool. And again, is an example here of a Remax national site, which is offering a listing, which is courtesy of Royal LaPage. Then we have the franchiser direct feed, which allows participating brokerages to share their listing content with the franchiser. So once a franchiser opts in, then um, if they have to opt in into the DDF of this particular feed, then automatically all their realtor listings will appear on the franchiser website. Uh, keep in mind that this probably is already um, happening in your, in your brokerage, of course. In some of the smaller franchises, sometimes uh, they need that technology. So we offer it, but of course, in a lot of cases, uh, your listings will directly go to um, the, uh, the franchiser website. Then we have the member website feed, which automatically helps you pull your own listings and uh, all the listings uh, from other offices, if that's the case, uh, if you have more than one office within your brokerage. So this means, of course, less time entering your content manually and fewer chances of error. So if a member wishes to implement this on their own website, we definitely recommend the services of a technology provider. Uh, this feed uh, may require some web programming experience to manage. So we'll talk a little bit more as well on that later on in the second part. And in this example again, so this realtor is the listing agent uh, for this property. So her broker opted to allow uh, the realtors in their office to pull from the member website feed. So she's receiving her own listings and again, based on the broker permission, she could also be displaying all the office listings as well. So in some cases, because you may have to manually upload your listings to your website, this is what it uh, avoids you having to do. It just sets it up for you. All right, so in the second section, we're gonna take a look at the dashboard. So how uh, all of this is uh, starts at the beginning. So setting permissions, as I said, nothing uh, starts until the broker decides to opt in. Then uh, you'd be able to create data feeds once these permissions have been set. And we do have an option to exclude listings that we're going to uh, take a look at as well. So first of all, how to access your DDF dashboard. You have a couple options here. In some cases, you may have a link uh, on your board page, Realtor Link, um, although Realtor Link is kind of going to be this decommissioned in the fall, so but your board may still have a link there. But you can always visit member.realtor.ca, and in either of these um, uh, options, you have to use your regular board login to get in. And um, so, yes, member.realtor.ca has a lot of other tools, which of course we're going to be talking about in our next session next week but I definitely encourage you to take a look here. So once you are on the dashboard, just choose the DDF option. And this goes for both, of course, agents and brokers as well. All right, so now we are going to look at the DDF dashboard from the perspective of the broker when they first have to set these permissions on the various distribution channel that they want to participate in. So let's uh, click on settings here. So in the settings area, so we have improved this process for brokers. It's way, way, way much easier to set their permissions. Um, so it's really uh, simply, uh, everything is done by a simple check mark in the, in the appropriate box. So first they need to decide whether they want to participate in the partner and real estate advertising website. So that means that all of these partners 
and um, advertising site that I, I talked about uh, earlier are all over here in this list. The one in the, the red box um, are, are the actual partners. And then once uh, they've decided to participate, they can choose individual site or select all available sites. So next, the permission is to whether to allow their agents to deselect any of the selected partners um, within uh, this list here. And clicking on the arrow that's right beside the name will uh, be able to expand the um, the, uh, the information here and you'll be able to be to go to that destination. So if you're not sure that you want your listings to go through this website, if uh, the broker has given you um, the flexibility to remove some of these sites, then you can always take a look and see if uh, you want your listings to go to these sites. So it's very different from broker to broker. Sometimes they choose specific sites only or they just decide to select all available sites and they also have the ability to uh, automatically opt in to any new sites because we're always adding new sites or new partners. So if, as a broker, if you don't want to have to go back every time, just make sure to uh, choose that option and automatically the listings would actually go through uh, to these new sites or partners. So next, they need to decide if they want to participate first in the national shared pool. So I just uh, mentioned that earlier and then decide whether to allow their agents to receive a national a shared pool, a shared pool fee. And then the broker needs to decide whether they want to participate in the franchise pool. Then we move on, of course, to the franchiser direct feed. However, in this case, the franchiser has to opt in first. So it's not up to uh, the brokers themselves. Uh, so if the franchiser has decided to opt in, then automatically the listings would uh, go on their website. And then at the bottom here, so we can see the member website feed. So again, brokers have the option to allow their agents to receive a data feed with only their listings or all of the listings from other offices if applicable. And that's pretty much it. And of course, saving changes is always a good, good idea. Whether uh, you're an agent that goes back to do some changes here, always, always make sure to save these changes. All right, so once uh, the permissions have been set, so they have been set by the broker, now I can start creating data feeds. So as uh, both, uh, like everyone, uh, agents um, uh, actually have up to five data feeds each that they can create. Uh, we haven't had any requests for more, so it seems to be enough for, uh, for everyone. And then uh, we're gonna take a look here. So you have to go either again as an agent or as a broker, you have to go to your own dashboard, click on data feed, and then at the bottom left, add a data feed. So let's take a look on how to create these feeds. And then what we're gonna do from here is uh, just follow the data feed wizard. So if you're familiar with the uh, wizard technology, they're basically just guiding you through specific steps on how to create something. In this case here, so it's offering me tr three options. So I have the national shared pool, the member website feed only my listings, or the member website feed one or more offices. So dependent on which feeds your broker has giving you permission, you will have these feeds offered to you. If for example, they say, no, I don't want to participate in the national shared pool, then you're simply not going to see it. So that's pretty easy. So you still have to, uh, to uh, set them up separately, but I'm just highlighting all three of them. So uh, as we move through step one, so we've chosen the first one here, first feed. So in step two, you need to identify who will operate your data feed. So um, as I said, that when we're providing you with these feeds, it's actually raw data. So it's not a simple cut and paste uh, situation. Um, you can still manage the feed if you'd like, uh, if you have a little bit of, uh, of experience, but we would definitely recommend engaging into a third party technology provider to operate that feed. Uh, so for the sake of uh, this exercise, let's pretend that we are, then we're gonna move to step three. So where to select a technology provider. So we have uh, across the country, hundreds and hundreds of providers 
if um, you want to set up this feed, but your company uh, that is managing your site is not on this list, then uh, you will, they, well, they will have to contact Korea. You can see at the top here is at support at korea.ca because all these companies have signed an agreement with us. So it's really important that uh, any new companies that want to participate in this uh, does the same thing. They do have to contact us in order to be vetted and then they will make us, uh, them sign the same type of agreement. So once you have selected your technology provider, then in step four, you will provide uh, the URL for your website. So where is this content going to be displaying? Okay, do you own most likely the, uh, the website itself? Step five, so indicate if you would like to filter the data feed. So by default, all the data feed con contain, uh, will send you all available content. So as I said, this is a national um, shared pool. So that means you could have up to 175,000 listings sometimes. So uh, in most cases, I would say probably 99% of the time, you probably just want to use the filter. So you do have the option to provide all available listings, but I would definitely recommend the, to use the filters to limit the listings provided by the fee. So let's take a look here. That would take us to step 5A, where you can use those filters to customize the listing content that is contained in your fee. So choose here the for sale or for rent or both. And of course you can have a price parameter. Uh, maybe you are specialized in high-end condominiums or high-end properties. So you may say a million plus. So property type, same thing here. You'd be able to choose uh, which type of properties you want to receive on your site. Then the province, normally the province would be where you are licensed uh, to sell. Uploading board, of course, uh, that where you are a member, and postal code. So perhaps you are uh, specialized in downtown condominiums, for example. So again, this is where you can get very specific as to what type of uh, listing or information you want to receive on your website. And uh, so these feeds can be set up, and of course, you can always come back to change them. Uh, like I said, you have up to five of them that you can set up. But uh, just, uh, just be mindful of what you want to receive on your site. And then you can set up these filters and automatically, every time there's a new listing that fits these criteria, then they will be applied to your website. All right, so this is a, a tool that we uh, release for agents only because about 70% of our member support calls that were coming in were related to agents sometimes that did not understand what were their permissions through DDF or, uh, or something that were trying to send their listings to, to websites only to have restricted access to some of the feeds. So what is new is, first of all, uh, is how to reach uh, your broker. So the, the, the information would be at the top. Uh, and of course, you probably already have that information, but in very, very large uh, brokerages, sometimes it's not always uh, as obvious. So you, you know who to reach if you want to discuss certain settings that have been set. And then um, right here in this page, you can see really, really clear messaging now as to where uh, the permissions have been set. If uh, the franchiser decided not to participate, let's just say the national franchiser pool, it would be in, in red. So you can really tell uh, exactly where uh, your uh, listings are going to go, which one you can participate in, including, if you see at the bottom here, my data feed. So uh, in this example here, your brokerage uh, has granted permission to create a national shared pool feed and uh, for a list, your own listing content and other offices as well. So much, much clearer um, understanding of what actually uh, you can and cannot do on your DDF dashboard. And there's an option here that the, it's only to be used on occasion. Uh, it happens sometimes that your client may say, I don't want to have my listings on all of these other websites. I just want it on realtor.ca. So what you're, you're going to have to do is go back to, of course, the member.realtor.ca um, platform or the, the, the dashboard, 
uh, go to the individual listing itself, click on details, and then you'll see kind of in the middle here, I just had it in blue, listing exclusions from data feeds. So let's just say uh, I'm set up uh, on all the feeds, but my client says, no, I don't want my listings to appear on any one of these other places. I just want it on realtor.ca. So you would easily exclude that listing here uh, from anywhere else from uh, but realtor.ca. So again, uh, this is an option that should only be used on occasion, but it's there just in case uh, a um, client for whatever reason would decide to, to do that, to limit the, the exposure to the other sites. All right. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit of uh, other, just a few, a couple of tools here that are available from member Real too, because it does uh, come to the, uh, uh, the information at the bottom because you can create these listing stats report, but the real to view allows you to see at the bottom, the DDF traffic as well. So I'm just showing here, it's just an image. So I'm not showing half of the information that is actually available from the listings itself. But um, here you can see Point Two Homes, KGG. So these are some of our partners, of course. So this is information that uh, you only receive when you actually send that report to your client. They're going to be receiving, uh, if you see the uh, example on the left, an email and a click uh, to a link to the actual report, which it looks a bit similar, but all the DDF information is not visible to them. It's up to you if you want to share it with them, but uh, they're going to get something a little bit uh, more generic. And in terms of tools, so we have this great tool to help you manage. A lot of the tools that I'm talking about, of course, um, can be seen or the stats can be uh, taken from this app. If you have not downloaded this app yet, the listing stats app, please make sure to go to your mobile device of choice and then just do a search on realtor.ca. It will show you both the, um, the red logo, which is uh, the consumer app, which you should still have anyways. So the black one is for uh, realtors only. So you will have to log in with your board credentials. It allows you to monitor your listings at least effortlessly from anywhere. You can also set up instant notifications uh, and get notified when your listings goes live on realtor.ca. Other features that's also available from the app is that uh, you'll be able to see all the active listings available within your office and also gain access to the active and historical data. And then you can connect with your clients and schedule uh, those uh, traffic reports. I just showed you a few slides back and just send it to them maybe once weekly or monthly. And of course, like with any app, it's really important to always do the updates because we're always uh, adding new features and of course, fixing uh, some of the bugs along the way. All right, so we are at the end here of our presentation. This is a little bit shorter one here. Uh, so I, I definitely encourage everyone to visit your member.realtor.ca. Uh, we're gonna get into a lot more of what's available there in our uh, next uh, presentation next uh, week. Yes, on the 14th. And again, I encourage everyone to download the Listing Stats app. Great tool for you to have on the go. So if you have any questions or comments at this time, uh, now is a good time. I don't think we have. No, I don't see any, okay. I don't see any either. Uh, well, if uh, it happens along the way, if you're uh, you know, going to your dashboard and you're not sure what to do, then make sure to contact us at support.creo.ca. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Lynn. This has been fantastic. Um, as Lynn was mentioning earlier, the brokerage has everything open to you guys. So we are participated that any new feed that comes in, automatically we get joined to and we're on all of the pools so you guys free reign free reign um but if you do have questions or or anything uh please reach out and then we can go from there but otherwise thanks so much lynn and we look forward to seeing you next week for our, our korea tech tools which will really dive into all of those listing statistics that you were showing us at the very end there Everything, yes. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. See you. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.